Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to start off with a quick lab today. Uh, doctor, I can't find a pulse. And then on the back of this, I'll put this right below it, is just an extra information sheet for you. Okay. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with number one with you guys. It says a single pulse is sent down the spring by starting from the equilibrium position. So, here's our equilibrium position. Um, snapping the end of the spring in one direction and returning it back to the equilibrium position. Practice sending pulses from, pulses from both sides. Go ahead, William. One more. Okay, and I'll go. Okay. Cool. Feel good? Okay. It's fun. Um, with one partner holding their end, so it won't move, that's you, um, the other should send a pulse by snapping their hand to the right. So the right is going to be that side, right? Yeah. Okay. What side does the, the reflector turn on? The okay, now boys and girls, you're going to be keeping track of this in your uh, lab sheet, mm -hmm. so do that again. It comes down on this side. Looks oh. like it, what is it look, which direction does it come back on? So when I go to the right, it comes back on. Okay, repeat by snapping it to the left. What side does the reflected return? This is number three. Yeah. So left. Ah. Okay, now. Okay, you got that? All right. So now, loop the string through a couple of coils at the end of the string, like what your boy is doing right there. With one person holding the end of the spring instead of the spring. So we're not holding it fixed over there. Now yeah. Now the spring can move a little bit, right? Yep. Okay. So it says by snapping to the right, what side does it reflect on? So again, whoa, that was a big, that was a big, uh, do you see that? I did. Okay, what side does it come back on? Okay, I'm going to go left. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, did you see that? Did you see it? Okay. Um, let's see. Remove the string. Both partners should send a pulse at the same side. What happens when they meet? Where are you going? Uh, which way do you want to go, left or right? We'll go this way. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Whoa. Do One, that again. One, two, three. Whoa! <laughs> see what happens when they met? Okay, and then opposite sides. Ready? Which way do you want to go? I'll go this way. Okay. One, two, three. And one, two, three. Ah. What happened when they met in the middle? Okay. Okay, that's really good. All right, so uh, if you were having some trouble with that, slow that down on YouTube, right? Slow it down. And then also, it is hard to see some of that stuff. So take a look at the back. Should I read this for them or should they Yeah, they can look at it themselves. Take a look at it. Uh, can two things be in exactly the same place at the same time? Hmm. Hmm. That's right. Uh, two waves can occupy the same point in space at the same time. This is called interference. Now, hold up. Can two things occupy the same point at the same time? No. Oh, the answer is no. No. Uh, something's okay. got to move. However, so, waves are different. Waves are different. Um, and what, we call, what we're going to be dealing with today is interference. That's right. Um, when waves interfere, their amplitudes add algebraically, so like adding positives and negatives. Yep. For example. For example. Um, here we have, and this is our line, this is the positive side, uh, that's negative, positive, positive. Okay, so we're adding a positive wave here because it's got a positive, we're looking at it right there. That's the negative side. Yeah, that's the negative side. Positive here plus a positive here, uh, and you can see that these two together get us a uh, Add up to make, add up to make that positive. Yeah, yeah. more positive. Okay, now let's talk about destructive. So we had a positive here and a negative here. When we add those two things up, we get nothing right there. Yeah, you get a positive one plus a negative one, you get zero. Mm -hmm. okay. And a positive one plus positive one, you get two. Okay, which is up here in the yeah. destructive. All right, so when a crest meets a crest or trough meets trough, a constructive interference um, occurs. So you get that bigger bump. And we saw that when we were playing with the slinky, you know, mm -hmm. when we had them on the same time side, cool. they met together and you got the bigger bump. Yeah, it was two times the size. Um, so here is a visual. This is what we saw when we had our slinky. You've got, you know, uh, 
wave A come into wave B, and when they meet, um, they uh, add up together, um, constructive interference, and then they keep moving through. Yep. If you think of A is positive one and B is positive one, they add together, you get positive two. Mm -hmm. And then B keeps moving that way through. They don't bounce a. off each other, they pass right through each other. Yes, 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 that's important. Um, when trough meets crest, destructive interference occurs. So we have a cancellation. What does that look like? Here we go. So we have A, which is a positive one, B, which is a negative one. And when, they, when they're running through each other, at this point, they cancel out. Zero, destructive interference. Yep. And then they keep moving through each other, yep. right? B keeps moving this way, A keeps moving that way. Yeah. It's a simple idea. Yeah. Uh, what is the wavelength of an 858 cycle per second sound in the air? Uh, air has a velocity of 343 meters per second. What's that equation? Let's see. It's... Wavelength is, oh, velocity is wavelength times frequency, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're like, oh, it's more, I couldn't remember that. Do that speed equals uh, a distance over time thing that we talked about earlier, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, what are we trying to find here? What is the wavelength? Yeah. Okay, so wavelength equals velocity over the frequency, and the, fre and the velocity is 343 meters per second. And our frequency is 858 cycles per second. Okay, um, there we go. Let's go ahead and find this wavelength, 343 divided by 858, and I get uh, 0. 0.4? 0. 0.4 meters. 0. 0.4 meters. Okay. Uh, how far would this wave uh, travel through uh, not negative two, but <laughs> two cycles, 1.5 cycles, and 3.75 cycles. Well, let's see. <clears throat> the wavelength is how far it travels through one cycle. Uh -huh. So one cycle would be 0.4 meters. Okay. What would two cycles be? So we just would multiply it by two, right? Yeah. Okay, so if I multiply that by two, it's 0.8. Yeah. Okay, if I multiplied it by 1.5, Point, you got that point again. Point six. <laughs> One point five. And point six. I can't do three point seven five though. <laughs> three point seven five meters. Oh no no not meters cycles. Here we go. I thought I forgot my units there. Okay, cycles cycles cycles. Uh, point four times three point seven five, and I get one point five. You know, it, 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 if you take a look at the units here in that original calculation of the wavelength, the mm -hmm. meters cancel. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, the, the seconds cancel and oh, you yeah, get these. meters per cycle. Oh, yeah. So point, that's 0. 0.4 meters per cycle. For one, for one cycle, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, and then these cancel right here and you get meters. I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, I'm glad you pointed that out. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, here's a meter stick, right? So <clears throat> it's traveling, uh, it would travel from here to here. Uh, in two cycles. two cycles and 1.5 cycles, uh, it will travel from here to where's the six? Here we go, right there, uh, six, right yeah. there, yeah. right? A little bit less than two, and then for 3.75 cycles, it would be this plus another half. Another half, that's okay. right. So that's how far it would travel. Um, two point sources of waves produce a pattern of constructive and destructive interference in the space around them. That means that um, uh, if you have a, you know, a speaker over here and a speaker over here, they're gonna be, um, they're, you know, they're gonna be given off uh, sound, waves. sound waves, right? And you know, what determines whether or not you hear that music or not? Yep. Right, what is loud or not as loud? We have and that simulation up. Oh, is that on this one? It is, it is, thank you. <clears throat> I almost forgot about it. Okay, here it is. Should I do it here? Okay. Let me get it over here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start these off here. Okay. What you got is water dripping in the sink like we saw before. <laughs> yeah. And black is a trough and blue is a crest. Mm -hmm. And look at this pattern we get. <clears throat> so uh, so the, the black is the trough, the blue is the, is the crest, but notice how this one is a little bit brighter and there's that dim part right here, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Right and dim, and so what that means is this is constructive interference right yep. here, and this is destructive. Interference. So we see a pattern of constructive and destructive interference, mm -hmm. and depending on where you are, 
-hmm. in a distance between these two origin points mm -hmm. determines whether you get it. Yeah. Rack that frequency up. So check it out. We got one, two, we got three constructive and two destructive. Yeah, that's actually really important. So one, two, every time I've ever looked at this, I've never noticed that. Okay, so that's... we've got constructive one, two, three, and then you've got these Now speed two. that sucker all the way up. All right. Come on, come on, come on. Wait a minute for it to do that. So see the frequency is increasing. Oh, okay. So what do we see here? How many uh, constructive do we have? One, so two, as the frequency three, increases, the wavelength decreases. Uh -huh. So we're getting shorter waves, mm -hmm. and that changes the pattern of interference. Mm -hmm. And then we have, you know, one, two, three, four. Before we only had two and three. Four destructive and five constructive. Yeah. Sweet. So at different points in the region around the two drips, you get either constructive and destructive. We need to be able to predict what you're going to get at mm -hmm. any particular point. Okay. And so you said, check it out. Two point sources of the waves produce a pattern of constructive and destructive ah, interference in the space around them. So beautiful. Okay. It is. Yeah, when I first read that, I, it took me a second. I was like, huh? <clears throat> okay. All right. So, how many wavelengths? Um, how many wavelengths between a crest and the next crest? These are the wave parts, right? <laughs> well, between the crest and the next crest, it's just one wave. One wave. Length, right? Okay. So, how about how many wavelengths between a crest and the next trough? about it visualize go back oh oh it's back yeah <laughs> um so crest this is the crest and the next trough will be down here so it's half a wavelength and if you get a crest and a crest you get constructive interference if you get a crest and a trough you get destructive interference mm -hmm. okay we did see that one uh to determine what type of interference is occurring constructive or destructive yeah. at a point the length of the paths from the source to the point must be considered. You want to look at the book here? Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, well, no, you go back to this one. Here we've got oh, right here. two speakers that are going in phase. That mm -hmm. means they're both pushing at the same time. And what do we got? Well, they're both three meters away, and the C and the R stands for uh, ref ref refraction and compression. So <laughs> ref you, refraction. you can think of the solid one as a crest and the uh, dotted line as a trough. Mm -hmm. And they're hitting here, and they're both crests. So what does that mean? Crest plus crest, we get... Um, we Constructive constructed. interference. Yeah, they add... A louder add. sound. And on the next page... Okay. Over here, so same thing, only this time uh, we're, we have a constructive and a de we have a uh, different lengths. This is three meters, and the other is three and a half. Mm -hmm. And we have a crest and a trough hitting here. And so, because we have a crest that's plus one, we got a trough minus one, and, and, they, and they cancel each other out here. Now, the cool thing is, this produces noise canceling headphones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so as Mr. Boykin was explaining this to me, basically the noise comes in and it takes this and it inverts it. So yeah. that way, um, you no matter what, you've got a crest and a, and a trough coming together. And you can see that the, the two waves are inverted, mm -hmm. and so that reduces mm -hmm. the noise level. That's how noise-canceling headphones work. That's why my mom is like, can't even hear me anymore when I'm talking to her. She <laughs> got the new, oh my gosh, she has like the new Apple headphones, and I'm like, I've, I don't even own a pair. Yeah. Um, they came for free with her new 5S upgrade for her headphone. I know, she's balling. Um, okay, uh, done with that one? Path length must be determined as the number of wavelengths. Yep. Okay, so uh, okay, oh, well, so that means this, right? So how many wavelengths are there from here to here? Yeah, oh. like right there. Mm -hmm, yeah, so you can see, let me use a pen, it's hard to point. Okay, so from here to here, that's one wavelength. From here to here, that's two, it tells me. Here to here, that's three, right? So you've got a crest right there. Mm -hmm, crest and trough, oh, and uh, right here? Yeah, well, which dot are we going to look at? Let's look. Which one do you want to look at? This one? Sure. No. Yeah, let's look. Now you're the boss. Now let's look at that. Uh, yeah, we can look at this one. Okay. Right. So this is one, two wavelengths, wavelengths right yeah. there. Okay. And then one, two, three wavelengths. Three wavelengths. So right. that's... Uh, that's we haven't gone there yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so keep that in mind. So, so you know, whatever point we're talking about at this point, we have to determine, you know, how many wavelengths is away is that uh, from, the, from the spot? Okay. Yeah. So... Path length must be determined as the number of wavelengths that we have there. Bada boom. Okay, the wavelength difference between the paths determines what kind of interference occurs at the point. So in, we, a minute ago, we had three waves from one speaker and two wavelengths from the other speaker. Okay, so, so keep that in mind. 
Um, oh, and if we, sorry, if we, what's the difference between three and two? One. One, okay. So three minus two is one. Constructive interference occurs when the difference in path, uh, in path lengths is zero, one, two, or three. An integer lengths. amount. Mm -hmm. And so and what we had at that spot that she was showing us was constructive interference. Yeah, because we've got one, two wavelengths here. We've got one, two, three wavelengths right here. Three yep. minus two is one. Yep. And well, it's, oh, it's so a those cool red dots are constructive interference. What are those yellow dots going to be? So let's take a look at this one. So this is one, uh, two, two and a half, yep. right there. Okay, so then we're going to go one, two, uh, three. three, right? Yep. What's the difference between those? Three minus two and a half. That's uh, that's half, right? Uh -huh. And that's going to be destructive interference because the difference in the path lengths there is half of a wavelength or you know three one and a half two and a half but we're, it was three half. halves six yeah. seven halves five halves yeah. seven halves three over two five over two that's five, right <laughs> okay um and so that's how you can uh, figure out whether or not you're going to hear a loud sound or not yeah okay um here's your homework today i want you guys to read page 457 uh to 459 so starting here okay starting with some of the stuff we talked about Okay, reading over to through here with the noise canceling. And be sure to take check out this. Yeah, see if you can figure this. Well, it's it's very well, clearly explained. What you've got is, you've got a triangle here. You've got one speaker here, one speaker here. Mm -hmm. You got this distance, you got this distance. And what is this guy gonna hear? Well, you're gonna need to find this. Mm -hmm. Isn't that Thag's theorem? Yeah, yeah, what, what are we gonna, what's gonna be the difference between the wavelengths from here to there? How many okay. wavelength difference? So, yeah. So that's your assignment. Mm -hmm. And then you're also going to do page uh, 475, number three. All right.